Doombots, it's time for another team review. Yeah, no, we're going to do another team review. It's been a while. I wanted to make sure I got this one right because a lot of people were hyped about this team. And I want to make sure that I give everybody information I think is the best to help them without wasting the most amount of resources. So we have Shadowlands. We're going to stop doing that stupid blitz thing I was doing to show the team. Uh, I get it. It was kind of cool. But, like, it didn't show anything, right? It was just blank. Sway. It was B-roll footage of this team beating up some Blitz team. Didn't really help you. Uh, if anything, I'll do follow-up videos showing them in war in the future. But this is about investment. In addition, I'm no longer going to be doing two videos for Tier 4s and builds and stuff. And ISOs, we're all going to do them in one now. Because by this point, when you put it together a new team you also kind of know what's going on with the ISO. So any new team I do from now on will all be completed in one video. Generally, I'll try to keep these videos short if I can. So starting with the Shadowlands team, here's what you need to know. Their accessibility, three of the characters are accessible from the second you start playing the game, Daredevil, Elektra, and Night Nurse. Uh, Night Nurse has two different nodes. Daredevil is an arena farm, and Elektra is given for free with the purchase of a Happy Meal. So these are characters you're going to have, and over time you're going to have a great deal of character shards just from playing the game. White Tiger and Moon Knight are new at the time of this video. They aren't quite farmable yet, so you either have them or you don't. They're not necessarily characters I would go out of my way to buy in the future because this team is a war team. So as far as accessibility, you know, three-fifths of the team is accessible. Uh, and not any of them in particular are characters you would go out of your way to farm. Now, usability, uh, independently, some of these characters have great value. Night Nurse and Daredevil uh, are both valuable for city events. Uh, just in general, anything that requires a city hero. Uh, Night Nurse is an amazing healer in the endgame Doom Raids that are currently available. Uh, Electra is great for the Hand Catalyst of Change event that comes around once a month. White Tiger and Moon Knight... Again, they're not very available, but White Tiger is an amazing single-target DPS damage-dealing monster, uh, and Moon Knight wears a white cape. So, yeah, those, that's their usability. As a team, uh, War, that's where they're good at. You might get some value with them in RTA. You might get some value with them in early arena shards that haven't quite matured into endgame yet. But that's where you're going to get the use out of them. You can't really use them much in raids uh, as a team. Uh, maybe if you have a very high investment in them, they can get away with doing some of the city nodes. But there are already a ton of good answers for city uh, nodes. They're not all the same. We have a bio. We have a skill. We have two mystic characters. They're kind of all over the place. They're a war team. Treat them as such. So we're going to start with Moon Knight and look at his tier fours and his investments. Uh, disclaimer. All of these characters have worthy tier 4s as far as using the uh, passives are concerned. Everything else kind of gets questionable. Starting with Moon Knight's passive, uh, it increases the health to himself and all of the other players in the game by 20%. Or the other you know, Shadowlands characters in the game. Uh, so that's huge, uh, especially for war. Gives them a little bit extra survivability. Absolutely worthwhile tier 4. Death from above. Uh, big damage, right? Uh, applied negative effects for two turns and in war clear all positive effects uh, I like definites instead of potentials so uh, increasing the damage getting two turns of positive effects and clearing all positive effects in war huge upgrade truth is he doesn't actually need it um, there are some fights where this upgrade is necessary overall uh, there's not many but if you are going to use this ult on turn one with Moon Knight uh, and clear all of the positive effects, then, yeah, if you're fighting like Emrauders at high investment and you're trying to punch up a lot, this is a great tier four investment for that. Outside of it, just as a war team capable of beating other people, uh, he doesn't need it. The, it, it. you know, the applied negative effects for two turns doesn't make too much of a difference. You're, a one, you're basically a one and a half turn combo team in war if... You know, you get through everybody's second turn, or most of the characters' second turn, and people are left alive. Your team's not strong enough in general, so you're now fighting a fight you shouldn't be fighting. You're further into it. So that's where you might look at these kind of investments. Good investment, not necessary, but very good. Uh, Night Guardian, absolutely skippable. It is a damage increase. That's it. It's 50% damage, and of course, the rebound chain goes up from 2 to 4 to 3 to 5, which also increases damage, but not controllable. Uh, good investment, nowhere near necessary. 
uh, and Lunar Strike, 60% uh, damage to target. Always apply a random positive effect for two turns. Uh, it's still a random positive effect. So two turns of offense up versus or speed up is fine. I, I would have preferred it if it was apply two of the buffs that, uh, per turn. This way you can kind of, like, every time he takes a turn, use the basic... Uh, he has a chance to it, but I don't think that gaining that positive the RNG and the positive effect makes too much of a difference It doesn't give him uh, Reliability like you're only guaranteeing that he's getting something you're not guaranteeing anything and besides he can get counter effect uh, Counter attack and speed up through the game itself when, with the team. So it's really just offense up. No big deal uh, as for his isos it's like Raider because as we've talked about before Raider goes best on characters who hit multiple characters or multiple times. He does all of those things. It's the best value for proccing those vulnerables. Now, you can put Striker on him. That's great. He won't take any of the defensive ones, and Skirmisher doesn't make too much of a difference on him as a character because he's already removing a ton of buffs, and he has pretty decent focus from the other team buffs, so don't need much on him. Also, try to get more than one red star on him even if you have to open more than 45 orbs like me. Uh, moving to Electra. Electra is uh, probably one of the most disappointing characters to have to invest in. The uh, focus increase from her setup here is huge uh, because you get the big chunk of focus right there. Uh, but at level five on spawn, apply evade and stealth to all adjacent Shadowlands and hand allies. The hand allies who could care, no one cares about them. But getting, uh, you know, evade and stealth to Moon Knight, White Tiger, or Night Nurse can be the difference between someone accidentally one shotting your character. Uh, you want to control who they're hitting first if, you know, they get a turn. Truth of the matter is, most of the time your team's going to go faster than them, so this isn't necessary, but it's still a really strong upgrade for this team. So we'll give credit where credit's due. Uh, Vital Strike is, I think. I think this is a trap. I don't like it. Uh, the 70% increase in damage is actually really good. But in war, apply disruptive for two turns. I don't think there's going to be many situations on turn two after you use this ability. Because it's not ready until turn two. Uh, that two turns of disrupted is going to make much of a difference compared to just one. Uh, I think by the time you use this attack, you're either going to kill the guy who you were hitting. Uh, or you're going to win the fight or you drastically over evaluated what you think you can do and you're going to get you know punched in the face so i don't think that two terms of disrupted makes too much of a difference from a logical standpoint i'm sure someone can cherry pick in the comments in this one situation where i did this thing the two terms of disrupted were great and that's wonderful then invest in the tier four and you'll be fine uh which is what you're supposed to do you're supposed to see if it works before you put a uh, tier four in something you're not supposed to just assume that every character should have every tier 4, uh, which is great. Uh, Into the Shadows, again, this is another, it's an increase in damage, which is great, but clear 2 to 3 versus just 2. It's not even a guaranteed 3. You're not even guaranteed to clear the attack, even though you have a pretty decent focus increase from her on the character. And uh, we're going to give her Skirmisher in addition. So, uh, yeah, don't even bother with this. That chance at a third positive effect clear doesn't seem incredibly relevant i can't think of many situations as this team flails out where i'm like man i wish i almost had a coin flip chance at removing that last buff uh, i don't think it makes too much of a difference especially because if you put skirmisher on her which we're going to she's going to be removing additional buffs anyway when she does this attack not a big deal uh then we have uh her spec uh, her basic this one actually is a little bit high impact because uh, on the full team, it's a guaranteed three bleed stacks instead of one. So this is a lot of backloaded damage uh, compared to before. And I do like upgrades that make guarantees. This is a guaranteed always bleed instead of 70%. I don't think this is necessary by any stretch of the imagination. But I do think this is a huge damage increase compared to just the 30% it says. I think that those uh, two extra bleed stacks on that character guaranteed... Um, especially because your focus should be high enough to stick, are really, really relevant. And, of course, because 1,000% extra focus. So I do think this is a reasonable upgrade for her. Again, uh, I don't think anything really stands out as necessary on her, but there is some value. Uh, 
Then we move to White Tiger. White Tiger is absolutely positively phenomenal. Uh, just all around. Eye of the Tiger. Uh, on spawn, fill her and her team speed bar. Passive. Great. Tier 4. Uh, Thrill of the Fight is a single target nuke with Tier 4s. The heal, heal for 50% of her max health. That's huge. Clear all versus 3. Kind of cute. Like, how many times are you going to really have more than 3 negative effects? Also, not available on turn 1. Has to be done on turn 2. So, eh. Uh, and then attack primary target for, I think, total with 600% damage and apply heal block. This is a single target nuke. The higher investment you have in this character, the more returns you get for. So if you are like me with a very low investment, four star, gear tier 12, four red, you know, uh, version of the character, you're not going to see the damage output from this. But if you had five or six stars, five or six red stars on this character, you might really see big numbers like in the hundreds of thousands kind of numbers but that's just based on where her damage stack goes no big deal there stalking slash is very similar to her ultimate it's uh and as far as the upgrade goes now if you look at it gain 20 percent piercing per shadow ends ally that's 40 percent piercing damage to all attacks or 80 percent piercing damage to all attacks four times 20 uh and bonus attack three times instead of two so that's uh the extra bonus attack increase is just another plus 80 percent the, bon the current bonus attacks move up. Everything goes up. This attack is insane. This is like, this is mathematically speaking, one of the highest percentage damage attacks you can get to the game. Uh, everything else doesn't matter. Again, same rules apply. Uh, I think this is a little bit better than the ultimate uh, because it's ready on turn one. You're going to hit absolutely cripplingly somebody really hard, really fast. And it's piercing damage, which means it goes through armor. So it's true damage for what it's worth. Huge, huge value. And then the in war two turns ability block. They don't need that. They're dead. So I think this is a great tier four for her. No questions asked there. And then we have Rising Claw. Uh, another kind of good one. Uh, you're guaranteed to get two turns of defense down. Uh, it also clearly says when this character counterattacks or assists, she applies defense down for one turn. Um that should go up with this clearly but the slow is big like there's so many big value things in her kit that you really can't really feel bad about any of the investments i think this is a great investment and if you really are going to work on one character from this team it is her anyway uh just pay attention to whether or not shadow ants needs to be present if you put the investment in because if you want to use her outside of that team you're going to be a little sol uh then we have daredevil unfortunate news about daredevil he's like Electra in that the investments that he got for being on the defenders team went away and now you need to spend tier fours to unlock those investments or those values for Shadowlands. Now the passive I think was always the same. This is a huge increase in speed. The defender part of it didn't matter because they were so slow that 5% was basically nothing anyway. Uh, but the Shadowlands team is incredibly fast so increasing their speed by a ton is huge. Uh, gaining additional dodge chance per Shadowlands character is also huge. He basically can't get hit on his own uh, on this team, which really does help this character kind of power through. So good investment overall for the team. Brawl. I mean, it's damage. Fine. Throw Baton, another one that actually does something relevant. You don't get counters on Shadowlands until you invest in this character. So. If you want them to have counterattacks and do more damage, you gotta kind of waste your money on this tier 4. That's not really a waste. It helps them. Uh, it just feels like a waste because they already get it from the defenders. So it's just, it rubs you the wrong way. No big deal. Same thing with Strike. Uh, you're paying for a guaranteed bonus attack. Most of the times you're going to be using this team, it's against villains anyway. So you're going from 80% to a hundred percent uh eh you know eh yeah if you think that bonus attack guaranteeing to hit is always relevant by all means do so it didn't matter on the defenders it doesn't really matter too much in this team but it's good like it's not a waste you know it's just suboptimal i think is the way to phrase it uh and last we have night nurse triage this is skippable as far as the team is concerned um because the team is a early one and a half two turn combo team that kills everybody 
if you extend the team fight to that long, this tier four will help them survive. But the truth is, if you can't beat the team uh, in two turns, your team's too weak. So this is kind of a, what's the word? You'd be, you'd be borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. You'd be investing in this to give them a little bit more longevity so that you can buy some time to put actual gear and stuff in the characters. And that kind of makes sense. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily worth the tier four. It's a okay tier four. Uh, clearly on the team, it, it keeps them alive and, and everything. But you shouldn't have to worry about keeping the team alive. They do that pretty well by murdering the opponents. Uh, urgent care is uh, absolutely insane. Uh, you know, the, the tier four on this is not so much for her team because you're very unlikely to use this on turn one on her team. Your team is very fast. She doesn't really need to get rid of debuffs that often. No big deal. But outside of the team, this tier four going to four energy means you're going to be able to do it the second you go into a raid node with her. So this is more of a solo character tier four than a team tier four. But clearly it has uh, added benefit to the, you know, to the team when you use them. Not great, but good enough. Uh, first aid is probably the best tier four on this character, let alone anything else. It's clear three negative effects from most injured ally and those adjacent allies. Uh, heal most injured ally and adjacent allies for 4,200 health. Plus 20% of her max health. And then call an ally with the highest damage to attack the primary target. That ally is White Tiger. So that's pretty much this ability is like, Solo amazing, on the team amazing, ready on turn one, good to go. Uh, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's a healing attack. So whether or not you need to do it, that's fine. But think of it how, like, you know, when you would you taunt with Luke Cage and Punisher would hit somebody because of that. It's kind of the same thing, except you're always calling the highest damage dealer. You don't have to worry about who it is, really. Uh, and then self-defense. This is actually another good tier four for the team. The damage doesn't make too much of a difference because she's not really doing much damage on her own. But uh, flipping two positive effects to negative effects is a great ability uh, on the Shadow Ends team. It would be better if she didn't need it, obviously. But uh, on the Shadow Ends team, it's great. The thing is, uh, against specific teams like the Black Order, you're going to see a lot of value in this. Against any other team, you're probably not in war because it doesn't make too much of a difference because you're going to be clearing all the buffs with characters like Moon Knight and... Uh, Electra, not a big deal last we're going to take a quick look at the isos these are the isos i've landed on these are the ones i recommend uh healer on night nurse because duh uh daredevil and moon knight both get raider because they're hit they hit multiple times and that's one of the reasons why raider gets so strong with characters that are constantly hitting more than one target or hitting a character multiple times in one shot those two characters do that very well uh you would think that then you would also put that in White Tiger because she has one of those abilities too. Uh, because I have two Raiders on Daredevil and Moon Knight, White Tiger getting the extra damage boost from Striker as well as the additional attack has been, uh, at least for me, more beneficial in fighting with this team. So I gave her Striker, she gets a bonus attack. Uh, in addition, she gets a flat 10% increase in damage. All this helps her be the character that's putting out the most value on the team. Uh, especially since most of her damage is done piercing, it is true damage. It's a little bit better than than the unreliability of a crit. Uh, and the vulnerable tar tags being targeted by these two is huge. Uh, last, we have Electra as a skirmisher because why not? You know, like guaranteeing her removing buffs and then throwing on vulnerables to take advantage of with characters like White Tiger uh, and basically the entire team is incredible. And you generally... Just get a little bit more value, especially at higher ranks. If you are ever going to ISO her to five, that extra focus on her is going to be the difference between her ripping off buffs off of like taunting Cole Obsidians, you know, or uh, her just kind of taking buffs off random characters. So that's pretty much it for the Shadow Ends team. This is what I've been using. Uh, again, I do advise you to get more red stars on Moon Knight than I did. Uh, in general, it'll probably be a strong play for you. But also, the other side, I also advise you to not necessarily pull a 7 Red Star Night Nurse if you can avoid it. So, pluses and minus. I would like to move some Night Nurse Red Stars over to Moon Knight if possible, but it's not. Comment below, let me know what you use with your Shadow Ends teams. Uh, I've been Tony Scangeli, and I want you guys to have a good night, have a great day, and I will catch you later.